Uh, it's just black. We'll get rolling here. Um, because we're doing this in, uh, in advance of the DDA meeting, which is next door at 7. So we're going to try to get everything done here by about 6.45. So welcome to those who haven't been here before. That's our second time doing this. Um, we're going to go through some things here, kind of touch base. For those who have been here before, have been talking to us, a lot of it will be repeat. You'll hear it again, but some folks are still for their first time hearing it. So we want to make sure to touch base on all those items. Uh, first thing I want to touch base on is utility updates. Um, when I came here a couple years ago, we everyone was talking about this project, this project, this project, and it's going to happen in March 2020. Well, then we all found out with not a lot of notice that it actually started what October of 2019. <coughs> that was kind of a bit of a shock that came to us when, when MDOT first rolled out those plans about all the changes to the infrastructure, moving back all those gas mains and stuff like that. So that really wasn't ever really spoken of a lot on the front end. So again, we were all playing catch up on that. Um, you've seen the work, uh, consumers mostly. There's been two things from AT&T. So consumers for the most part uh, initially started south of Verde, when they called segment 2A down there, from Drainer up, and that was a lot, a lot of the township, some of the village, moving all around. They sent us some plans where they just thought they would be digging. Of course, they're digging about 30 other spots. Um, they never showed us a plan that they're gonna be back on Mill Street, but yet they were. So again, the, the utility companies, I think, are used to doing what they do, moving the gas lines, moving the wires, working on a day-to-day -day basis without much care of who they affect. At least the guys on the ground. They're there to do their job. They leave it to their people up above them, the managers and such, to get to us the information to share it out. And a lot of disconnect that we've been dealing with there, so at least a big part of that is gone now, so that's good. They started on that part, um, one is 2B, I think, from Burdick North. Um, a couple weeks ago. Not as much work to do up there as the project really only stops at Harriet Street just north of town, so that's much smaller space, much less work was to be done anyway for the gas mains. Um, so we did uh, uh, meet with one gentleman, how they were gonna be in the sidewalks over here on the north of uh, Burdick. There was some concerns there, we met with them, and John Powers, and from uh, Homegrown, and we had some concerns about tearing up that big sidewalk and leaving it open during that time frame. They started to do their work, they got a little bit done, I think they got that all done, right, John? It's all done and backfilled in. Um, and then they started to work at Davidson Street. That lot, a lot of rain came that one weekend, it was muddy, there was a lot of water on the ground, they never did finish at Davidson Street. They have now pulled off um, for the work that's north of Burdick. They'll be back on March 2nd to continue. Consumers, even way back in October, November, when we were, this was all coming to light at Consumer, uh, MDOT, at the Pontiac MDOT office, <coughs> Consumers has issues with their internal labor contracts that they have to lay off contractors and certain amount of their temporary seasonal people three months every year. Of course, that was right about the time this project was taken off, that those things were gonna take place. So those people, even though they could have continued working, their internal organizational problem required them to leave. They'll be back on March 2nd to continue the gas main work north of Burdick. At the end of this week, they should be completely done. So we're told. Everything south of Burdick, as far as gas main consumers energy work, should be completely done by the end of this week. They'll be gone and not seen again, unless there's issues throughout the project. March 2nd, like I said, they'll be back starting from Burdick North. I think the next spot they have to uh, East Street a little bit, Davidson Street, there's some. All the way up the east side by the fire station, all the way up to uh, Harriet is where the, most of that work is. And then a little bit on First Street, right around the corner from 24, there's another location where they're doing some work. So. Hopefully that will only be a couple, two or three weeks worth of work when they come back in March. And then that'll be after consumers and out. The second location that AT&T is working at is right there at Oxford Bank of Stanton. That is a vault in the ground that's undersized for today's needs, just like the one they did at East Street. It's in the traffic lane. That's why the cement barricades are mandated to be there from MDOT. The barrels don't work. The barrels are okay when they're working in the right of way to get a one lane buffer. But when they're actually working in that traffic lane, and that requires those cement barricades to be in place for protection of the workers. Um, they actually started out there a few days before the barricades got up, and him that was a little upset with that, and they got him out there. So that'll be going on for three, four more weeks right there. I didn't see anybody there today. I drove out. Um, I thought I would. So that is another vault location. There's a lot of boring of those the things. You see the big loops and the hoops of the uh, AT&T materials in front of the Crittenden building down there at Broadway as they're pulling those materials through the borings. Um, 
they had a breakdown in their equipment and our EPW had to use our equipment with them one day last week to help. And hopefully that will be done in, like they said, another two or three weeks. But that will be a whole new vault, oversized vault, put in the ground, re it in, and then as it's moved back out of the way. So those are the only two AT&T locations, the one being done on East Street. Once the vault was done, you may have noticed up here, it was done, they were gone. And then about a week or two later, another <coughs> barrel went up, and, and now the AT&T workers were down in the vault doing all the splicing of the phone lines. And then once they started on that, it's a, you start now, you don't quit till you're finished. They were around the clock on that for about a day and a half to get all those wires in there spliced. So that is done now. So that should be it for the AT&T work at East Street. That same thing will happen down here. Once the construction work and a new vault is put in place down in the ground, AT&T will schedule their technicians to come in and get down in the vault and do the, all the splicing. And there's a much more um, number of lines coming out of this uh, location down there than there was at East Street. So that might even be a couple days around the clock. If you see folks there down in doing the splicing. Again, AT&T is trying to coordinate their technician crew with their contractor crew, and they're all trying to, of course, coordinate with MDOT um, to get everything squared away. But for utilities, a little bit of work was done by DTE. You may have seen some trucks around here and there. They were moving some poles, removing some poles, things like that. There's a couple of poles on M24 that you'll see go away. I think there's still a few <coughs> north up towards Lakeland, soft water, towards the fire station that those poles are going to be just gone. They, they, won't, they moved the lines to the back, so it'll look nicer. Especially as part of the landscape, that would be better. Um, but it's been a bit of a challenge with the utilities. Again, we're told on Monday an email, you'll get several days notice, we'll set up a pre-construction meeting, and Wednesday morning I'm driving into work and there's lane closures that I had no idea were going to happen. So, of course, then we scramble around and try to get the word out. Of course, now after the fact. But again, utility companies, they work around the state, and their goal is just to get the work done. And we're kind of collateral damage. Uh, hopefully, MDOT's got a much better plan in place. They will be meeting weekly. MDOT plans on having a, an, uh, a storefront office, if possible, right in the downtown area that they'll be their construction office. And AT&T, or, or uh, the construction and MDOT will be setting up in that uh, place. They want to be right in the mix of it. They want to be visible. They want people to come by and get information and see you know, a map and things up on the wall there. Um, Glenn has provided them some addresses and available spaces downtown. It may end up being a job trader that's on a vacant lot, but they want to be right downtown, right in the middle of things, so they know they have to live with it too. The traffic in and out, they want to see it day to day, right there. Um, we don't know yet what location they'll come up with. Hopefully in the next couple weeks they'll figure it out. The contract, people have asked a lot of questions. Well, what are they going to do here? What are they going to do there? Are they going to start down there or start down there? We don't know. MDOT doesn't even know. Once they choose the contractor, I think it's December, or I'm sorry, um, 221, it was the, uh, when the contract is at the letting or when they're due? Wedding. That's when wedding. they're letting. So they'll have their contract chosen then. Mm -hmm. They'll know what contractor's doing it. Uh, Joe, I have a tentative date set as March 25th at the high school with MDOT for the uh, meeting. They're going to talk about the schedule, where it starts, mm -hmm. what days yeah. are going to be working on what areas. Drainer East, Drainer West, then North shut down March 25th at the high so school. So once they let the contract to the individual, there's probably one or two companies, Dan that's being and another large company that's probably going to get the project of this size and can handle it. Because um, you know it actually goes from the Lake Roy and all the surface refilling and milling, milling and refilling down there as well. It's a lighter project down there, but it still starts way down in the village of Lake Roy and goes all the way through up here to the north end of our village. So once that is known, that contractor will present the plans to MDOT. Here's how we plan to attack this problem. Here's the staging that we want to do. Are they going to start on north and south and tear up concrete work as they go? Again, that'll all be spelled out to MDOT once the contractor is chosen. And they'll present that plan. Um, then we will know. And then we can start sharing that information out. Um, but Nicole does our communications here for the village. She'll be talking about the communications and how we propose to get that information out, various ways to communicate with the residents building owners, the business owners, all that here shortly too. So um, the frost thaws is what was kind of triggering when the project can start because the very first thing, I keep telling people, the opening salvo, when you see the intersection work at Grainer 24, that's it. That's the starting gun right there. They have to totally redo that intersection. They're going to do the east side first. North and southbound 24 traffic will stay in place. Two to three weeks they're going to be doing the east side. Once that's all done, then they're going to flip over and they're going to do the west side, which is the southbound, and then traffic will be shifted to the intersection. 
<coughs> so once that's complete, that's when, well then they'll, kind of, then they'll pivot to the larger project starting from Grainer North where the total removal of the, kind of, of the pavement down the dirt happens. I wasn't aware of this, of all these meetings we've gone to, I mentioned to Pete and he had heard about it. When they're doing the intersection work, that drainer first off, they're doing the east side, they're going to close drainer eastbound. And so they're proposing uh, detours, they have them all mapped out where they're going to go. So you won't be able to come up and turn east on drainer or you won't be able to come south and turn east on drainer. Um, trucks coming, wanting to go to the industrial park and all this area will be detoured. The detour route is all the way up to Broadway, around and back down to this area. If you live out here, that's how you're going to get there unless you find another way south down here or whatever. Um, that there, you know, two to three weeks perhaps on this half of the project. Then they'll flip over and do the other side. And then the same thing is going to happen. This will be closed over there. Yeah, you'll be able to, now you'll be able to go eastbound on the new park, but you won't be able to go westbound. As you're coming south, they're going to detour you vertic to Pontiac down. This is how you're going to get to westbound drainer. We always knew this was going to be a used, highly used route, even if it wasn't a detour route, but now this is going to be one of the, well, maybe not the first detour route, because this is stage two, stage one is over here, but that's going to bring you down there. It's going to be all signed, it'll be all signed and everything for all the folks, lots of signage. Coming down here, we'll talk about the businesses being open and stuff, to we have signage in place for that. Well, we can talk about that a little later too, so. This is the biggest thing that's going to happen right out the gate, like I said. So that's going to make it difficult <clears throat> if we're going this way, coming back. Um, they're going to direct them that way. They didn't show us anything. For people coming northbound, and this is closed, so I didn't see any detour. So maybe they're dealing with that down in you know, Orient or somewhere, we don't know. But again, maybe that's, you know, it wasn't part of what they sent us. They sent us in relation to the people coming south here how they won't be able to turn there. I mean, local people here already know they can cut through here or get over to Pontiac or something. But for the commuters, the commuters will be directed verdict not time. Yes? So we were told that glass will be resurfaced after this is done. Glass so people will be resurfaced somewhat at the beginning. As this is taking place here. But when they're done, to compensate for all the traffic that will right. turn up. Right. Not only that then, but as this is taking place here, this means the frost laws are off, they're able to move heavy equipment. That's kind of what was holding up the starting of this. We don't know if there's any frost on the ground the way winter's going. But <laughs> nevertheless, when the frost laws are lifted and everything is ready, and they start working on this, that's when they're going to, I believe they're contracting with the County Road Commission to do the skip patching all the way through the detour route. They'll go through there and do some of the patching beforehand. And then once it's all over and done with, they'll come back and resurface the route as well. What about the so, uh, same thing for Pontiac Street or Tampa Street? Not going to happen because, because a lot of traffic out of Waterstone and all the trucks. Right. The only routes they were ever willing to talk about is the official detour routes. They came to be responsible for everybody going willy-nilly all over the place, A. B, when I <coughs> talked to them about uh, maybe some patching on this road, for one, this road isn't that bad. I just drove it again last week. And B, it's only going to be for a couple weeks versus this will be the route, M24 route, 30,000 cars a day for six to seven months. Where this is going to be, you know, 6,000 cars a day for three, four, five weeks. So they're like, we can't justify that. It won't matter it, 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 to them. They can't do any work on it. If there's some trouble spots on that road that deteriorate, we can probably get them to address that. But it won't be anything to the degree of what this Glass View route is going to get. So that's what will take it into there. And then we have the map over here. It's been here for a long time, and it's on here for the next, for the, for the main detour route. Um, like I said, do it. So yeah, the Glass B northbound. Any any stop signs along here, Oscar Lake, or turns, these will be removed. So this is going to be a steady flow of traffic around when the main detour route starts to try to get people up there as much as possible. There is going to be an upgrade to the signal temporarily for the project for left turn light, north and south. That will help for the buses in the afternoon coming down there trying to turn left to get out to the middle school and the other elementary. Um, and then all the way up by the, school, the high school at Ray Road, there's going to be that freeway stop will be turned into a, a temporary signalized location as well. Let's try to get those people that are coming on that route to stop as little as possible to keep the traffic flowing. Um, they've addressed the through crossing that the Poly Inn Trail up there too is right now. There's stop signs for the cars, those will be removed. Um, the, the stop ahead signs will be removed. And then there'll be different, new, bigger, brighter more information signs on the Pollyan Trail that says crossroad traffic does not stop. 
because they're used to having the right of way, so to speak, as a pedestrian. So that's being addressed at Folly and Trail. Um, I have a question there. What about Monument Street stop signs? <laughs> if we had really known, you know, last year when this was coming, uh, this coming we probably wouldn't have installed the new ones there. Is that um, every kid could have waited the school? So, so I'm worried about them having to cross that road for the school. Not right. Important. Right. So is there going to be something for those guys to get across their safety? Well, we can look at that particular location. I know there's been new ones there. I don't know what particular road you mean. Is it like a hockey street? This is Peter over to the, to the school there. This but I mean, from whereabouts? Um, it could be either. Uh, oh, for OES? Yes. Oh. Okay. He's got to cross that road. They've got a flow of traffic going through there. I, I'm, right. I'm afraid it's going to be unsafe. Right. That that's we'll have to look at that particular intersection of whichever street that might be. Oh, there's going to be Moyer. Moyer's yeah. supposed to street. Chief could probably speak to which which of the streets down there now, Mike, that have the stop signs on Pontiac? Um South Leon yeah. Street. Okay. Well there's one, there's one or two that don't, I think. Moyer going north. Yeah, Dennis said Moyer and Park Street have the stop signs, right? Okay. <laughs> so if, if it comes to the ones closer, I don't know where you could put one there, right down by OES that would because that's not a crossing street right there. Right. There is no crossing street. I'm just worried if there's so much traffic going through. They have to cross north of that perhaps at the <clears> four-way stop. Does the yeah. But you're not going to remove the stop signs out of there, but you're going to move them out of Burdick Street. They're out of uh, this one here, um, the one that goes into Oxford Lakes, it's the three-way MDOT, is it? because that's their route, 30,000 cars a day. They don't want people stopping and stopping and stopping on that main um, detour route. Okay. They want this traffic to flow non-stop right up to here. Well, they're coming south, it's, they're not worried about that many cars coming south? Well, they're gonna, the southbound for the main detour is down 24 still. Oh, okay. This detour is only for those that are looking to go westbound on uh, Drainer. And there's awful lot of cars. Yes, I think the numbers that they threw out was six to seven thousand six to seven thousand a day versus thirty thousand a day doing this route. Okay. And that's gonna be for they tend to do both sides three to five weeks perhaps. Okay. This is only in on the one half of that when the uh, westbound part, yeah. stage two, that's what'll direct mode there. Because when this part's closed, they'll still be able to come down here and turn on there. So that would be the second part that kicks in. Okay. I, I will tell you too, the police departments at OES during school, uh, when they come in and when they exit yeah. out uh, in the afternoon, because we let the buses out. So we're there 90% oh, right. of the time. Yeah, that's that's yeah. in there all the time. I'm just, yeah. I'm just yeah. wondering. Well, if we have to, we'll become physical stop signs. We'll get off and we'll make sure the kids get across. Okay. Safely, so. right. Yes. So, yes Are they adjusting the speed limits in any of the roads? I don't believe so. Um, it's still 25, I think, all the way through here, and that will stay the same. Um, I think this might go down. I think 24 does go down to 25, I think, in the village. I went back and looked at the reforms they just done last week. I think this, because it's a construction zone, will be reduced some. Uh, but again, that's, that's the main detour and everything else, so 24 um, southbound. There will be a stop sign added here for those coming in towards 24 on Drainer. There will be a stop sign there now because they want to let this traffic flow around there northbound. <laughs> that's an adjustment for there as well. Again, once this is complete, then we're just down to that main detour, and that should be it um, for the rest of the project, except for all of these cross streets. All these streets should be open, except for when they're working right in front of that street. And when they're working at this street, both north and south streets have to be open. They can't have two streets consecutively closed at the time. Burdick Street, the main cross, will be open, again, all the time, except for when they're working right there to the lane pipe across that intersection. So you'll be able to come in, if you come in Seymour Lake Burdick and, and go to the side of town to eat whatever normally, you'll still be able to do so. Um, until that such time where we don't know, that could be July or August when they get up there and they're going to start laying that pipe, sewer line and stuff across that intersection. Then that intersection will be closed while that pipe goes across it. Other than that, that intersection across there should be open all the other times. Do you know when you'll receive the updates to the routes? If you're going northbound in M24, making left at the drainer, when when will you receive those updates about the routes? You know. Well, I know they have the what they call the purple change of message sign, the PCMS sign down there, down by right south of the village right now, down by the old Kmart. I think is where it is. Uh, they do plan. They have regional uh, all the way out to 24 and 69, M53 and 69. They have regional way out signs to directing trucks to either southbound 53 southbound M15 to try to eliminate that kind of traffic from this area. 
and then but the more closer inside they'll have those like when I come in from the north each day there's one up there by the old by Pet Boys or somewhere in that neck of the woods or by Seymour Lake Park I think is where it is somewhere there there's a sign talking about the land closures from Oxford to Orion so some of those signs yes we'll be getting every week once this project is underway we'll be getting a schedule of what they're going to be doing in the next two weeks so as soon as they get that to us we'll share that to everybody yeah. So they'll say, okay, we're going to spend the next eight days on this project, barring weather. And so. Yeah, on this location. And like I said, and there'll be weekly meetings between MDOT and the contractor, if or whatever downtown location office that is for them to talk about their very specific narrow scope that they're working on, too, whether it's the sewer line, the township sewer line, the big, the big drain line that MDOT has put in there, either way. Um, so that's kind of it. It, it. The opening thing, though, is going to be this trainer road and I said the initial one is going to be the east side so that's going to cause some consternation for people coming and having to model especially the trucks that come to the industrial park they're going to have to go all the way up to Broadway and around and turn which I don't understand why they went to Broadway because this turn is worse than this turn it seems like it would have directed them to Burdick down but then the, the Burdick they're both this is a 90 and that's not so maybe that's what they figured this 90 and then that are better than this hairpin turn and this 90 I don't know, but that was all MDOT's decision as to they looked at turning races, traffic count, and things like that to come up with their detour routes. Um, so that's about it for the detours. Again, this stuff is going to be on our site. Has anybody has anybody in here heard about the Restore M24 website? Sorry. Two? Okay. So we have a website specifically for this project that we're going to be pushing information to. I think there's some flyers out there on the table right up here. Get them. It's called RestoreM24.com. RestoreM-24.com or RestoreM24.org. Or restore we got three different ones. So if you search for it, you'll be able to find it and get to that site. That site is going to house all this information. So a lot of this is already on there. There's a way for you to go on there and sign up for emails. So you may not follow social media. You may not be aware or want to be aware of social media and get those notifications on your phone. But you could say, you know what, I'm going to go in there and sign up for an email though. And if we send out emails twice a week, you can get them and you can look at that. Um, this information up on this wall is going to stay here all summer as we meet and keep going through this. Um, obviously, we'll add more as more information comes around. Um, but again, we want to reach out and try to get information. You can always call our office. You can email us direct. Uh, we our email information is on that uh, little sheet there as well, cheat sheet. Um, there's other things they want to talk about as far as what they're going to do for the downtown businesses for promotions and communications as well. So I want to leave that for them. But if you have anything more about the detours or that specific, yes sir. Do they anticipate any discussion they've done regarding posting no parking on some of the other arteries that support this uh, detour? So like Park Street, Mechanic, all the ones that are... Could be. Yeah, we don't... No, we haven't. Well, we have talked about it, but what we don't want to do is say go to Denison and say everyone likes to go down there and get to West Street over to, to bypass let's make that no parking we don't want to take an action that's going to invite a huge amount of traffic down that street so right now we're just going to leave them as they are and force the no parking near intersections near stop signs you know because some people park right up next to a stop sign thinking that you need to park back to them the, the police will help with that there's some concerns from Chief on Denison and some of the more narrow streets with a the parking is sometimes pushes into the center too much and you know the police will we'll just have to help notify people we'll try to make it a little bit wider because the, the fire department's going to be struggling with this on a daily basis what roads close today what roads close tomorrow so they may be going down some alternate routes for their emergency runs as well so they're really concerned about making sure everyone is, if they do park try to stay off the road the best you can um, but we aren't going to really make any changes to force people down a particular road unfortunately it's going to be a bit of a free-for-all and uh, they're all public roads, so yes, sir. What provision, if any, is in place to keep people <coughs> from using the designated alternate route and not cutting through a subdivision like Willow Lake? We have one way to get in and one way to get out, and they both involve State Street. Now, if that becomes a de facto, if that becomes a de facto alternate route, we're going to have trucks, we're going to have this, you name it. The plans and the school buses. I mean, just think about fire and rescue and yeah. 911 calls. What do you do then? MDOT has over it. Now, I thought you had a place on Lakeville and on North Oxford Lake to get in, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's the same street. Okay, but I, when, you, I, when you first told me that, I thought you were giving me the impression of going one. No, we're, one we're looking at two houses there. Barricades will be placed. 
across those entrances is say no through traffic. That's all they can do. Yeah. Now, I've been told by law enforcement that, well, what if somebody cuts through there? You can ticket them perhaps by disobeying a street sign. Is that somewhere right? They ticket them now. The case are supposed to turn left. Okay. Coming down. Same thing will happen across from the Lakeville, near your entrance on Lakeville. Same thing is going to be set up at the Oxford Lake subdivision. There's going to be a large barricade with signage on it that says no through traffic. There, Same thing on the south side uh, as you come in up that uh, glass beat and you, you know, you can go straight into Oxford Lakes. There's going to be barriers there too. So how do the residents get through? Yeah, yeah that's what if you're a resident, you're not through traffic. So it's not a barricade, it's a mm -hmm. sign. It's not a barricade. Yeah. Well, it'll be a big barricade, but it won't be uh, impeding you. Um, we talked, we've met with the Oxford Lake Association three, four, five times at, 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 at MDOT and as well as here. We looked at a couple of different options. The option that they came back with was this barricade, not in the, in the traffic lanes at all, but over on the grass on both sides as you're coming up from the south. Because that's what that traffic from the south is being pushed right around there on the glass beat. They didn't want it in any of the traffic lanes. They, they're going to be one on each side of the road, big barricades, no two traffic. Follow-up question. Yes. You say after the, I this whole hoo-ha is done, you're going to repay glass where it's, where it's damaged and so forth? I think from start to finish. Will they make that same provision to State Street in the event that we get a lot of traffic? I mean, you're not anticipating that. What's State Street? I don't know. Well, <coughs> if it's, no. They won't, they won't do it for any of our streets. The only ones they're going to deal with is the main 30,000 car day official detour route. Well, then they have to stay off of State Street then. Because okay. then they don't become us to do it as the residents. Right. Well, again, okay. all they can do is put signage up saying no through traffic, and if there's enforcement to happen, that can happen. Uh, otherwise, yes. Sir. Okay. Did you say there? You are going to put up a temporary left turn signal at Burdick and Oxford Road. Burdick and Glass Street. Which, yes. Or Oxford. Road. Yes. Yes. And so, that is putting up a temporary so, left turn signal there for the north and southbound only. Okay. Because that's a detour route. And that was my concern when they were putting that is that as the buses come in in the afternoon, there's no way buses are going right. to. People are going to be stretching that yellow. We know that. Yeah. It's it's already, I mean, you can already see traffic being backed up going north yeah. and people waiting. If you're in the turn lane right now, to go west, eastbound. To go eastbound on yeah. Lakeville, you may get one, yep. one car every cycle. That's what I told them. Well, when, when school's out. One bus per red, that's what I told yeah. them. Yeah. When school's out, traffic will back all yep. the way up. So there will be a left turn arrow added, they'll take the, the signal down, they put up a signal with a left turn arrow on it. The left turn arrow will be from north to southbound, both. Um, like the guy said from MDOT, there's only so many seconds in a minute. Every second you add to that left turn light takes away from the whole cycle from everybody else. But they're going to set it up and they're going to watch it for the first week or two to see if the guy has to come back and adjust the tank on that left turn. Didn't they mix that due to the $80,000? Well, we asked for it beforehand, it, not even related to this project per se. It was the, the schools came to us and said, yeah. well, let's look. And we thought, you know, the infrastructure's there, the cables are there, the lights are there, the, the, the control box is there. Yeah. What would it take? Well, that, that's well, why the school bus is cut, they told cut them through ours because they can't stand that weight in the morning right. or at night. Right. And right. So, so when they that. came to us, even if we split the cost of the school to be 40 40, the school's like, we just don't have that money. So I said, we have to at least put a, left, a temporary light here. I, I thought they would have one of those, you see in like a bridge project, in the middle of the night, there's a, line, or a, a light on a beam or a boom for the trailer that operates it. I thought that's what, what they might be putting up. When we got the plans last week, it's an actual signal. But they're taking our three light down and putting up a three light with a left turn arrow on it. So I'm wondering, okay, if they can put that up, why can't they just leave it? So that will be the goal yeah. to try to get it to leave it. I mean, how are they going to downgrade the box and pull it back down? It doesn't make any sense. I only saw that plan last Tuesday. It came to me via email. And I was going through the plan looking like, okay, so they're not bringing out a temporary boom type light for that left turn. They're actually going to remove that one. There's two lights, right? The one on the left side from north to south will be removed. Three lights with the arrow on the bottom will be installed. So again, the, the obvious question is why can't we leave it? We'll see. Sure. Have we got any final resolution on the widening projects? I don't believe there's been any changes lately at all. I mean, the product is out to bid. The, the, so well, the, the project is out to bid. Um, it's my understanding that they didn't get all of it. People to for the right of way, there was a couple right of ways north of Burdick that people weren't communicating or even getting with MDOT, you know, because they were at widening the right of way back so they can add the left turn lane north of Burdick and then it was going to taper back in slowly to go underneath the bridge because there isn't enough room for the bridge. We've had at least 
one gentleman on the west side, north of East Street, that was just never getting back with the uh, MDOT. They're going to go forward with the lanes as they are, but because they didn't get the extra right away from this gentleman, as the project wraps up, they may not have to have been in, may not be able to have a sidewalk in front of this guy's house because the, the whatever right away was used up by the lane wide as it tapers back. So there may end up being a section in front of this house or two with the sidewalk didn't have space for it. That would have to be followed up on after the fact. You can always go back later and get some right away at a sidewalk easy enough. But there's, I think there's more than one. I think all the other ones were taken care of on the east side. Yeah, yeah with one. On the east side, I believe those are all wrapped up. Okay. Yes. We just got the one. Yes, my understanding. Jim, what would our contact be to talk to uh, uh, with regard to signage? I'm here on behalf of Oxford Marketplace, okay. and I already see that people have created like cut throughs from our parking lot to glass feet over dirt, over curbs, over landscaping. I already see it now. Mm -hmm. Who would I talk to about signage or barricades that would prevent them from being able to do that? I mean, there are probably four pathways that people have created back through. Right. Um, Mike, go like this. <laughs> I, I drove them last week with my own personal life. So, because I wanted to know. I heard about them, I've seen them. So, right. yeah. We don't really want to get involved with, in saying it's okay because it's not. No, no, I don't want uh, to. We don't want to. Right? So, so it's going to be a lot of the, the, the two properties that come to the back house last me and a half years, are, it's all private right there. Right. So, I, I guess maybe you could put some barricades up. Maybe we could work with you on a, a permit, a sign permit, or a fence permit. And we could waive the fee if we need to, or something. We could maybe work with you. I don't think MDOT is going to, they're going to say, look at, look at those two tracks and say, that's been going on a lot longer than the thought of this project. Mm -hmm. And, and so those properties behind us, first of all, they don't belong to us, right. and they're vacant. So, right. like, I can't put barricades and signage on property. You can put them along your curb line, perhaps. Your curb line around the backside, perhaps, there's space there. You only need a few feet, perhaps, for a sign or, or a barricade or something. Okay, um, so, so the village doesn't participate in any of that signage for private properties, except for neighborhoods, perhaps. It would be, it would be up to the property yes, owner, which unfortunately, is us. Yes. Yeah, that's not cool because there's yeah. about five tracks that have been well, parked yeah. around. And, and, and you could speak, speak to the police department. I mean, Chief told me this a week or two ago, he pulled over a Jeep as he's driving down there. He's happy driving down there and Jeep would come down and he's pulled over right. a young man talking. Yeah, I, I followed so, one this evening on the way yeah, here. There was one not, going around that retention pond right along that edge. Right, yeah, I yeah. that's going to be. So yeah, a couple things. There's enforcement, yeah. A, and then B, you could um, potentially Put some barricades or fencing across the back to stop that. <coughs> because even if this project passes, we take them down, it's going to go right back to where it was. So if it's a long term issue you want to address, I, I think a long term solution would be best. And then the only thing we can do is we catch them on either side and write the tickets, but that's one car as opposed to how many go through there. You know? Well, and I just can oh, imagine, and, and now nothing's blocked yet, but I already like have talked to a couple of trucking guys they're like oh that's like a straight through and i'm like no yeah it's not so no, especially for trucks exactly <laughs> over those curves and stuff. i mean ups already thinks that's their delivery oh, yeah. route they're like over the curve and yeah. over a lot of stuff there so yeah, like yeah it, sure. i didn't go over any curves when i went there's a way to do it without the curves oh, around <laughs> the retention <laughs> pond and yeah i ended up going to oxford township but, <laughs> uh, but i just wanted to see for myself what it was last week when i drove it to say all right where is this? Where does it go? What do you have to do? And how can we get around that? Some people have come to us and, and, and said, hey, can we make that efficient and get to there? You know, for, for pizza guy to get out quicker. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's not designed for it. It's not safe. It's not signed. It's, you know, <coughs> there. there's a lot of reasons why it shouldn't. Well, I'm guessing that's another, so there's going to be a good police presence along Las Vegas route with 30,000 cars a day going on, yes. I assume, like yes. there's going to be. We but there's just much of a demand to be over here on Pontiac Street. We are and, just as excited as you folks are. <laughs> <laughs> and there's um, only a few of us and a lot of y'all. Okay, so we'll, we meet them a lot of time with this. I want to touch base on the communications end of things a little bit, too, to, to touch base. But by all means, if you did get one of those small little cards on the table, please take it. It has contact information for me and the Glad DD director and Cole and other communications. It has information about the website on there. And please go to the website and sign up and let us send you the emails. You can ignore them, but at least you're getting them. If, we, if we, you send us your email, sign up on the site. That would be very helpful to us. So, all right, so we'll launch your touch base a little bit.
Sure. The business stuff. So I'm Nicole, I'm with Communications with Village, and um, I produce a lot of this information. So like these maps here, those weren't from MDOT. Um, we get crazy ones that I come to Joe and I'm like, what do I do with this information? So um, I make a lot of it um, so that it's digestible or easy to understand. Uh, the job um, details back here, it highlights all of the areas that they actually did the gas line. When I went through and made those, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty intense how much they're doing. So um, it is really important that we do um, get as much information out to you as possible uh, with the things that are going on. Um, okay. So um, we will continue to have monthly town hall meetings. Um, on one of those postcards in the back, it has a listing of all of the dates of the town hall meetings that we do as scheduled. Um, MDOT will be, Joe talked about this, MDOT will be doing a, a weekly meeting with contractors. Um, and then we will produce a, a weekly podcast where you can listen to the recap. Uh, where we'll talk about what was completed the week before and then what is kind of forecasted so uh, you will be able to um, keep up to date with what's going on. Um, educational displays which are uh, ones like this um, in the community uh, room available so if you have questions restore24.com it's restore-24.com you can sign up for emails and then Facebook so it is really important for us to communicate that information however um, what we really want to focus on is promoting our downtown promoting our community and uh, continuation of community events um, I know that construction is going to be going on we all know that it's going to be going on but but life still goes on. So uh, we do have a, a full schedule for the year with a calendar of events, and then we do have uh, the DDA Promotions Committee met a couple weeks ago and, and mapped out our calendar for the year, as well as um, some specific uh, promotions that we're gonna be um, doing um, you know, to, to help to continue to promote uh, our business. When Glenn and I were talking, um, you know, my big question to him was, well, if we didn't have construction, what would we be doing? And it just came back to, will we be promoting our community and encouraging people to come here? And that's really, uh, I think, what an important focus is going to be uh, as part of this project. And we'll have to work really hard to make sure that we keep telling everybody that there's no place like Oxford. Okay. Uh, Glenn, you want to talk about what's coming? Yeah, when, sure. it's all, when it's all done. When it's all done. Go uh, for These are renderings in progress. Uh, our original design renderings had to be redone because MDOT's historical preservation folks said, no, you can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. So our old renderings were rendered kind of obsolete. So what we've got here now is we're just trying to get a picture of what it's going to look like when we're done. We'll click through to the next one. And so, the idea being, this is getting closer to what it's going to look like. We'll have final renderings where all the details are fixed, for example, on the pedestrian crossings that are going to be in downtown. That's a roll curve, that's not a straight curve. Just little things like that. So, we're going to try and illustrate everything that we're getting into the downtown that's going to make it perform better and be quieter and be safer when we get done with all of this stuff. So. It's going to be nice. It's going to be a lot more comfortable down there. The sidewalk's going to be a lot wider. Should be a lot quieter when we get done. So it should be a nicer place to hang out. An extra crossing. Yeah, we'll have three pedestrian crossings in downtown, so you don't have to walk the Berkeley Street. Do you have any any plans for a crossing down by, say, Lincoln Street, or something down that way, so we can get across the road over there? Uh, not at this point in time. There's no way to get across the road with the day with the marketplace if you want to do it without having to drive. Yeah. It's, it's deadly getting out of the way. <laughs> that's, that's an issue that we're looking at is trying to figure out where we can put a pedestrian crossing between Dennis, between Broadway and Drainer. The issue being it's, it's four or five lanes and it's a higher speed than we would want. I mean, we might be able to at some point put a hawk system in there and have a pedestrian crossing established, but that would require having not to agree with the safety audit findings. So, and at this point, their safety audit says that's not a pedestrian zone. Well, it's the same with the be downtown, right? Yes. So, so the design speed in downtown is, is targeted at 25 oh, miles per hour. Okay. The design speed when you get down yeah. 
you know, length of the cropper, the net design speed is roughly 55. Okay. So, yeah, last chance for questions. We've got five minutes for questions. I'll start in the back and work my way forward. Is there any provision for bicycle lanes through downtown? At this point, because of the heavy dose of truck traffic, we are not putting bicycle lanes on M24. MDOT really doesn't like us to do it on a truck route. What we're doing is, is we've got in our transportation plan, we've got a bicycle route map planned for the village. So we're going to start putting in those as we get forward so people can bike into downtown. Not down. But not down 24. It's just because of constraint right away and MDOT's insistence on four or five lanes. So it's not, there's no ideal situation for bikes on 24. I have two concerns. I, I think you're, there's a lot of issues that you have to address, but I'm concerned that we're not addressing the consumer and how we make them feel comfortable about coming to the community and giving them some knowledge via maps or whatever so they know how to navigate through this challenge. Second thing is we're not giving any consideration to the hardship that the merchants are going to endure. My business, for example, is down 40% and we're not even in the construction phase yet. So what are we doing to assist our merchants, keep them in business for what appears to be 10 months? Nothing is in place. No type of loan program where they can get some supplemental money to shore up where their business is off. Uh, this is not good. And we don't seem to give any recognition or awareness that the downtown is not two blocks. The city is from border to border, and we constantly ignore the south and the north. 40% of your budget comes from the businesses and the property owners north of, of Broadway. 40%. Without us, you wouldn't exist. But yet you do nothing to assist any of the people who run businesses or have properties in those areas. You need to change your focus. Your focus needs to be worrying about the consumers, worrying about the merchants, worrying about the property owners, because they're the ones who are going to be the victim of what happens. I'm, I'm with you that you need this. Mm -hmm. The problem is we've got to make sure that when we're done, we've got a common way. Yes. Yeah. It'll be beautiful. Our goal at this point is, is we've got a three-phase media campaign. We've got one that's targeted at our retail <coughs> to provide information to those folks who shop in Oxford on how to get into Oxford, where to park, and explain, yes, we're still open. We're going to be open. If you're coming into the town off of Burdick or Lakeville, there aren't going to be that significant of delays to get into the town. It may mean having to wait an extra minute or two to cross Burdick, or it may mean parking on the opposite side of town than what you're used to. But our goal is, is we're going to spend a significant amount of money pushing out through various channels how to get into town. We're still open for business, and we've still got all this free parking. We've only, we're only losing a temporary 42 parking spaces for the season. Most of our parking in Oxford is on the back side. So that's step one. Oh, we're also doing detour routes. Nicole is, is grinding through these as fast as we can. And yes, we'll be doing them for, for your properties down south to direct people from Drainer up to Pontiac and we'll cross on, on Park and then up Mechanic to, to Lincoln. So the problem we have though is we don't have one business in this community where the consumer can't go someplace to get that service. Not one. There's other restaurants, there's mm -hmm. other consignment stores, there's other spas. So there's contests if it's too difficult, to they're just going to go and they're sure. going to establish a new business relationship and we'll have a hell of a time getting them to come back. We also have a, a couple of incentive programs that we're rolling out that are coming out at the end of this month uh, to encourage people to shop in Oxford. We have a couple of buyer incentive programs coming out 
at the end of this month. We're just in the process of finalizing all of the details on it. That's why we haven't pushed it out to everybody yet, but we've got a couple of programs that we're looking at that we think will be successful based on what other communities have done in this similar situation. And you know, we're going to start focusing on the individual businesses along the corridor in an attempt to get people to remember they're still open, you can still get to them, it may take you a minute or two longer, but we're still going to be open for business in Oxford. And you know, we're launching a couple of campaigns at the end of this week, and the first one that's going out is there's no place like Oxford. And so it, it's going to be trying to get those folks who have shopped here throughout the community, you know, who don't necessarily live in the community, but they shop here because this is their downtown for a lot of people. And so we're going to work very hard to convince these people that, yeah, it may be a minute or two longer, but if you want to go down to Lake Gordon, it's going to be a half hour longer. And so it's going to be easier to get to Oxford than it is going to go to Clarkston or go to Rochester. So our goal is, is to really start pushing those customer retention activities starting full board in the month of February. Victoria, and then I'm going to duck out. Is the street side parking uh, being eliminated? No. We are actually, at this point, we're losing 42. It shows everything. The, you know, this, this would be your awning, and this would be your tree, and this would be your parking spot. Um, we're actually, by the time we get done with this, we'll actually gain three parking spaces on the 24. We've pushed them around a little bit. <coughs> But between the bump outs and pedestrian crossings, we end up with 44 parking spaces downtown on the street. Okay, adding three more of these crossings. Okay. I don't know um, much about Brock. Um, I heard a lot about the detour. Good. During the project, you're going to, from Drainer up to Harriet, your, this street is going to be completely rebuilt, right? Correct. Is it going to be closed at all? The southbound will be maintained 100% of the time. Okay. The northbound is going up last week. As they work on the east side, northbound first, <clears throat> there'll be one lane southbound. Once that's all done and completed, whatever time that is, June, July, we're not sure, then they'll flip the traffic to the new pavement and then they'll work on the southbound, okay. current southbound side on the west side of the road. Yeah. South of Drainer, it goes to Golden Gate? Yeah, and that's just a milling fill. They are removing the street down to dirt down there. They mean grinding it, milling it, changing some intersections, addressing some of the crossovers, things like that. So, I would try, I, I need to drive from Oxford to Oregon and Oregon and back. And I believe down there, there still will be one lane south and north, right? I'm not sure if they're going to be all on one side and you're the other, or if they're flipping them over one on each side and alternating back and forth. That's down, that's, that's down the township, down the Lake Oregon Village. I don't know all the details of that down there, but north and southbound will both be along the 24 corridor there. I'm not sure if <coughs> flipping them all to one side or sharing and flipping them in yeah, on each side. I can see you. In Oxford, you have a, a detour on the side of the road going from Oxford to Orion. There is no detour. No, there's no good spot. They will have north and south both, south of Drainer. So, we need to stress about the fact that we're going to come out of this without any doubt. Well, that is true. We're, we are doing this without bonding the entire project. We've been saving and squirreling away money for the last four years. So. The village and the DBA aren't incurring any extra debt. And so when we come out of this at the other end, we'll still be in good financial shape. So. Well, on that point, one thing to consider is this, this is an MDAP project. They were going to do this whole project from Golden Gate all the way through to Harriet, regardless. They have a big storm sewer that was going to be replaced down the middle of that road. This was going to happen whether we wanted to do anything about it or not. A couple of years before my tenure being here, I've been here two years, the DDA and the, and the village worked, well, why not take advantage of this time frame and redo our downtown and other areas, north and south of the downtown, while this is taking place to, to piggyback on it, because it aids, it's all the design work and everything can be rolled in, and it's gonna never be cheaper than doing it at that time. So, 
we are piggybacking onto their project, but even if we weren't, that detour route, all this stuff, with all this utility work that all we have been, nevertheless. Um, so the, the, what's going on around here isn't something that we chose, or that we're behind, or that we're doing. We're just piggybacking on our little portion of to their project. So again, that's why we aren't driving this boat. We're just doing the best we can to stay on the boat and get information from them and share it with you guys and to better the downtown and all the stuff at the same time to take advantage of that. I mean, I am curious about something. Uh, the narrowing of the road. That was in design. That, is that in dot or is that? Uh, that was probably not going to happen, was it? Without narrowing of the lanes through, yeah. the, yeah. through the town? Yeah. That's something our design team requested. Okay. Internally here at the village, right? Not in dot. Or was it M dot? We went to M dot okay. and we got a federal exemption to narrow the traffic lanes. What, what's I don't, normal standard? Uh, for a truck route, of the, for an international truck route, it's 12 feet. So we're losing three. So, so you're using you're losing one foot per, per lane. Yes, we're down to 11 foot travel lanes, which gives us a design speed of roughly 25, 35 miles per hour. We're targeted at that level. When you're at a 50, when you're at a 12 foot lane width with this lane configuration, you're looking at a 50 to 60 mile an hour design speed, and we're trying to slow it down. That's not a drainer. That doesn't start a drainer, though, those 11 foot lanes, does it? Um, we start 11 foot lanes right in front of Marketplace where it tapers down. But there's going to be a whole center turn lane there, right? There's The existing turn lane will still be there. The problem is, is the right of way next down, you can't get a turn lane in through there <coughs> where there's the constraint on the right of way. And that refused to address that in any way, shape, or form. So the turn lane is only going to be part of marketplace as it will always into the town? Uh, it's going to be existing dimensions on the turn lane. So at, at Lincoln Street there's no turn lane? No. It'll only it's hard now Lincoln Street as it is. Yes, but again there's constraints and them that didn't wish to purchase the additional lane. Is there to light? Um, at the, you get the schools, <laughs> all, the, all the supplies from schools go down those streets. Yeah. There was trying to get out and go north, you get hit. We did a turning analysis, MDOT did a turning analysis in 2004, and that's when they got Broadway Street light. They were denied a light at Lincoln because there wasn't enough turning volume to warrant a light under state standards. Hmm. MDOT's got their little charts that say this is the threshold we have to have of this main turn. It's not about safety. Yes. We got this. Trying to get off that road. The MDOT will go by the numbers though. And I'm sure sometimes the day it's, it's huge, but then other times the day maybe it isn't. Whatever MDOT found is what they're hanging their hat on is why it won't happen. There will be a left turn. Uh, right now you can't turn left on Broadway, but there will be, a, that would be wide left turn and there'll be a, uh, probably a left turn light there. But it will be allowed. Left turn. Left turn yeah. right there. Last question. Yeah, we got a meeting starting in the other room. Will there, will the center turn lane extend all the way south to Brainer? Yeah. From the place where it is now, will, will it be all the way to drain it? No. I was told it would be. No, now, it's, so it's we're going to stick with that narrowing turn lane as we approach Drainer, so there's no, there's not. Well, you come north from Drainer past Marketplace, directly north of, of, of Marketplace, there's those two properties which pinch down the right way, which MDOT is not willing to address. So that former Chuchu's chocolate was not purchased. Correct. By MDOT now. But, but he's coming down south. south there. I don't know down there. That's all the town's I, I saw one plan that I thought I saw the left turn lane going all the way to Drainer. Me too. Yes. yes. Yeah, south of Drainer. South of the right place. It's no, no, between Drainer and Marketplace. That's five. That's going to be five lanes. A uh, center yes. turn lane will be there. Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. Thank you. Yeah, because it's wide up down there right now. All right. I'll give the plan. I'd like to make one final comment. Excuse me. You did discuss, you know, ways in which. Uh, the business will want to contact through websites and through uh, other means uh, to know what's going on. The one thing I'd like to mention here is that the DDA, the people on the DDA, the people on, in the village, the administrative staff, they're all wanting this to succeed for obvious reasons. They want you to succeed if you're here as a business person or if you're not here. Keep in mind that it's not a spectator event that you have to participate in this in order to be successful. <clears throat> they have funds allocated through the DDA and through the village, which will assist you to get through this. 
they thought of it, as you can see, almost every virtual angle that you're going to run into. And, and will there be other issues? Yes, probably will be. But they'll handle them when they come to it. It's up to you, as business people, to make this successful. Now what I know, I was a businessman for 37 years. So it's up to you, working with the, with the village and the township together, to succeed. All right, well thanks for coming. We're going to be doing this often, at least monthly.